Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Canada Comics Open Library uh, Read Out Loud event. Uh, my name is Jordan Reginald Alec and have been volunteering at the Canada Comics Open Library as a librarian, comics consultant, and board member since nearly its inception. Thank you so much for joining us for another online Comics Out Loud event. Just going to say a few words and then hand it over to our storytellers for the evening. There will be time to for questions at the end, so feel free to ask what is on your mind in the Q&A box on the Zoom screen. It's located in different places depending on what app you're using. Um, I'm using an iPad and it's located at the top of my screen. Um, tonight's readings are being recorded and will be posted to YouTube in the near future. This project would have not have been possible without the support of the Ontario Arts Council, thanks to an arts grant. We are hoping this project can be a resource to blind and visually impaired community members who often are unable to access the comics medium. On this note, I would like to take a quick moment to describe what is currently being, being shown on screen. A fairly pale skinned human with rosy cheeks is sitting down wearing a blue sweater with a print of florals and leaves on it. They have a ponytail and beard, Behind them is a colorful painting with a closed cabinet to their right and a small space heater to their left sitting atop a speaker. On top of the closed cabinet is another speaker and a pile of different colored fabrics and a couple of spools of thread. Light is coming from a window to their left. For those who haven't heard of our organization, the Canada Comics Open Library was founded in 2018. We are a volunteer run library and nonprofit organization focused on comics, their accessibility and showcasing how incredible comics can be. You can visit our website at canadacomicsol.org to view our projects, blog and other online comics resources. Canada Comics Open Library would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional Anishinaabe Mississaugas of the new First Credit Nation, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat and the Indigenous peoples have lived on and cared for this land for more than 15,000 years. This territory is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Treaty. Today, Toronto is still the home to many Indigenous people across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that settlers on the land directly benefit from the process of colonization. Settlers like myself and Canadian organizations have a lot of work to do with no exceptions to our library. The Canada Comics Open Library is currently focusing on prioritizing Indigenous comics for our collection, showcasing Indigenous creators on our website and physical library space, making our cataloging system more inclusive of Indigenous communities through tagging and language, and making our space accessible to Indigenous creators. Please get in touch with us if you have any suggestions towards furthering these goals. Thank you so much for attending our online event. As the continuing COVID-19 pandemic persists to not allow us from hosting this Read Out Loud event in our physical space, we appreciate you tuning in and genuinely hope that one day when this is all over, we can continue doing these Read Out Loud events and sh share these wonderful artists and creators to you in person. Uh, now on to the, the comics and the creators. Um, this week we have uh, four incredibly talented artists and storytellers that, um, go under the name of Hello Boyfriend. And I'm gonna uh, pour them a little bit of tea here from our, our uh, teapot and let them take the reins for the evening. I'll see you all at the end of the show. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Uh, come on in, you're just on time. Uh, we have plenty of space by the fire. Um, welcome to the Hello Boyfriend Comics Out Loud. Uh, where are my manners? Would you like a drink? Of course you would. Uh, Jade, Victor, Keelan, our guests have arrived. Uh, would you bring the drinks out, Jade? Yes, yes, of course, right away. Uh. Here we are. A tray full of delicious beverages. A cup for you, Keelan. Oh, thank you very much, Jade, who's just passed me a cup. Mm. And for you, Christine Wong. Oh, thank you very much, Jade. I've received the beverage. And dearest, dearest, Victor Martins. 
Oh, thank you, Jade. Wow, mine's big, eh? <laughs> You have the biggest mug. Super size. I sense a bias here. Yeah. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now that we're all comfy, uh, let us introduce ourselves. So together, the four of us, uh, Christine Wong, Jade Armstrong, Keelan Gorlevsky, and Victor Martins, we make Hello Boyfriend, a Canadian comics collective of four very good looking and talented pals centered in Ontario. Um, you may know us from our fun collab series, Doki Doki High, or have seen us at comic festivals around North America, uh, including the Toronto Comics Arts Festival or the Vancouver Comics Arts Festival or the Small Press Expo, plenty of places. So the one speaking, I am Christine Wong, she, her, um, I am, I love making autobio comics and making people laugh. Um, currently, I'm actually, I'm living and working in Japan and I'm making comics about my life as an English teacher. Um, so I'm the one that's in a totally different time zone than all the other boyfriends currently. Um, I am an Asian Canadian woman with a very beautiful brown face, freckles, glasses. Um, my medium-ish black hair is tied up in a ponytail. I am wearing a mock neck t-shirt, the left half of which is black, and the right half of which is covered with pop culture comics <laughs> things to show you the duality of my life as an English teacher and a cartoonist. The cartoon side of my shirt has words such as bang and boom on it, as all cartoonists use on a regular basis, as you know. And behind me is kind of a nondescript whitish background with a black strip down the middle. I'm sitting in front of my sliding door closet. All right, and I'm going to pass it off to the next boyfriend. Hi, it's me, the next boyfriend. Um, my name is Jade Armstrong. Um, I am white. I have brown hair with um, my signature straight bangs. <laughs> Um, I have, I have it up in like, I don't know, actually, I'm not going to show it cause it's too embarrassing. Um, but I tried to do two little braids, um, kind of like Anshi from, um, Utena, Revolutionary Girl Utena. Um, <laughs> I am currently wearing a pseudo made outfit. Um, it is navy blue and red and very cute and good. Um, I have round glasses. In my setting, my environment is um, in my living room. We have some brown chairs, a cool lamp that I got for uh, like $30, a plant, um, and some beautiful wall art. Um, anyway, <laughs> about me, I am a non-binary cartoonist. Um, they, them pronouns. Um, my primary residence is on unceded Algonquin territory. Um, I am currently working on my debut graphic novel. It is called Scout is Not a Band Kid. Um, and it is coming out in spring 2022 with Random House Graphics. Um, yeah, thank you so much for showing up. Uh, and I pass it off to the next boyfriend. Hello, I'm the next boyfriend. Um, my name is Victor, Victor Martins. I use they them pronouns. Um, I have dark hair, dark brown. It's like kind of wavy and it's shoulder length-ish. Uh, and I have a beard and I'm wearing a white colored shirt with like some navy blue stripes. In the background, you can see my very wrinkly gray curtain um, and some herbs. This is catnip and we got some mint. Um, you can also see a little bit of my balcony. I think there's a pigeon right there. I don't know if you can see it, but I think that's a pigeon. Um, just like chilling on the railing on my balcony. Um, you can't, like no one can see this, but my balcony is also covered in pigeon shit, which is not relevant. Um, yeah, I'm a cartoonist and illustrator. I'm originally from Brazil, born and grew up there. And I came to Canada for school and now I live here. I live in Toronto. Um, with one spoon treaty territory and I'm very excited to be here. 
and I will pass it off to the next boyfriend, Keelan. Hi, I'm Keelan. Um, I am, I'm Keelan. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a white woman with a brown, a stylish brown bob. I'm wearing a red lipstick in the shade Ruby Woo from MAC. Around my neck is a beautiful machina scarf. It is 100% silk. That's right. Has matchsticks on it. And then I'm wearing a black shirt. My setting is my room. Um, it has some white walls, a mirror behind me. And you can also see me there. Um, I they believe to your left is like a lot of light coming through my window and also this faux Tiffany lamp that you can't see, so I shouldn't describe it. Um, uh, there's also some plants such as an ailing snake plant um, to your right. And then on the radiator, which is also behind me, there's a ailing aloe and then just miscellaneous clutter. Please do not um, examine too closely. Um, I am a cartoonist and illustrator from Toronto. Um, I'm working on my debut graphic novel, which is a standalone graphic novel with a short box, uh, which will be out in May 2022. Um, and now on to the comics. Join us, won't join you? Us, won't, you? <laughs> won't you? Won't you join us? <laughs> this went better when we practiced it. Yeah, um, it really yes. did. All right. Goodbye. All right. Now. All right. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Uh, so now that we're all acquainted, uh, let's start what you came here for the comics reading. So I'm actually going to start us off with some of my comics. Um, so first, I'm going to share some of the comics that I'm doing right now. So my most recent stuff. So I've been making comics uh, for my students. So I teach at a high school. And so I've been making uh, English comics for my students to read about my daily life in Japan and at the school and interacting with them. They're all short four panel funny comics that I've also been posting on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, so uh, I'm going to share a few of them with you right now. So give me one moment to bring it up. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share the PowerPoint. There we go. So, can everyone see this? Yeah. Okay. So, as mentioned, I am Christine Wong. Uh, let's take a look. I hope you like some of my funny comics. So, let's start it off. First panel. We see a black and white and grayscale comic, the interior of a museum. A girl with a round face and glasses and a ponytail, Christine, is walking through. We can see various artifacts in the museum in the foreground, midground, background. Uh, she seems to be enjoying her time, energetically walking through. Someone off panel says, hello. Next panel, we see museum staff, a young woman. She asks Christine, would you like a tour? Are you a high school student? She seems eager to do her job. Christine, still smiling, looks over at her. Next panel. Uh, Christine's a little bit embarrassed, but she says, ah, no, I, I'm not. The museum staff off panel says, oh, sorry. Uh, Christine replies, it's okay. She still seems really bright and happy. The museum staff asks her, a junior high school student. Christine responds, I'm a teacher, looking a little bit angrier than the last panel. So this is something that's happened to me on several occasions in real life. For some reason, people think I still look 13 years old, which is quite unfortunate. Anyways, on to the next comic. Uh, so the first panel, we see two characters talking to each other. There's a short-haired Christine with glasses on the left and a medium gray haired person on the right with short hair and a high neck sweater. Christine says, can I sit in on your class today? I want to see how the normal English class is. Their partner responds, sure, you can sit in the back corner. She's not here today. She gestures over towards something off camera and both look towards it. 
We see the interior of a high school classroom, a Japanese high school classroom. There's many desks, lockers, a window. The focus points us towards the desk in the back corner. Text, last row, by the window. We see this one desk way in the back over by the window. Christine, shine in her eyes, hands over her mouth in disbelief says, the main character spot. And her friend responds, are you okay? So this comic <laughs> is about um, an anime. The main character usually sits in the very last spot by the window. And I had the pleasure of sitting there. It felt, it felt pretty good. All right, so the next comic, the first panel. Um, so text, it's been a tough year, school shutdowns, worrying about illness and distance. A lot has changed in daily life. We see a social distancing sign of two figures with an arrow marking two meters, separating them, and another image of a face mask to the right. So we're referring to the coronavirus pandemic going on right now. Of course, it has affected schools as well. Next panel. A high school student, a young girl, approaches Christine in the hallway. Christine is putting up a debate poster. This text, Christine, I've got bad news. The student approaches looking rather worried while Christine has her head turned to look with a question mark, what's wrong? Next panel, Christine looks really distraught and confused. We can see spirals in her eyes. She's kind of sweaty. In the background, we can see the thoughts racing through her head. Oh God, what has happened? Has someone gotten sick? Or maybe, oh, maybe not just only one, but a cluster or, or maybe someone has died, oh no. We see all of these worried thoughts running through the background. What, what could this terrible news be that the student has brought to her? Off panel, the student says, it's terrible. Next panel, a very, very sad and distraught student with tears in her eyes says, Michael B. Jordan got a girlfriend. Ah. Uh, Christine says, to be a teenager. And that's that. So those were some of the more recent comics that I've been doing about my life as a teacher. I hope you enjoyed those. Um, so usually I do like funny autobio comics like those, like lighthearted moments and like fun things that I've observed. Um, but next, I'm actually going to share um, a more personal comic that I've done. Um, and the next comic that I'm going to share is still autobio, of course. So it's still about um, my life and events in my life that have affected me, but of a little bit of a more serious topic. So I'm going to be talking about, um, well, let me just pull up the cover here. So this is a comic called Father, Father. So I have the title up on the screen right now. We can see the title, Father, Father, in handwritten block letters. Um, on the cover, we can see two people in profile looking at each other. On the left is a Asian woman with a beautiful round face and glasses and black ponytail, me again, uh, looking a little sweaty. And she is looking a little distraught, looking straight ahead at the profile of an older woman with a more pointed nose. Um, below the big title, Father, Father, we can see two Chinese characters that read as gong gong, which means grandfather in Cantonese. Um, we can also see at the bottom of the credits, a comic by Christine Wong and social media credits on the left. Um, so this, <laughs> this is a little bit of a more personal one that I did about my grandfather and about my connections or my feelings about my Chinese heritage. Um, and I've actually, like, I haven't really shown this to many people before actually. So I'm a little bit nervous about showing it here. Um, but hey, I hope you'll enjoy it and uh, let's see. So this comic is in black and white with gray shading as well. Um, and the style is of course, well, it's more a more cartoony style. Um, I tend to draw more cartoony like that, but let's, let's read it together and see how it goes. Okay, so text, it's just a summer job. Looking from a bird's eye view, we can see the inside of a clothing factory. There are many tables filled with sewing machines, 
just huge trays full of clothes, a lot of workers um, standing around. The workers are all light-skinned and have dark hair. They are all Asian. Um, we can see many wires crisscrossing over the ceiling. The walls are a little bit dirty looking. This doesn't look like a very new place. We can see spools of thread on the floor, people ironing, just piles and piles of clothing. Uh, sound effect text. Mm -hmm. The sounds of machines. We can see several of the characters are talking and they have dialogue, but we can't read what it says. The letters are all, they look kind of like scribbles. They're illegible. We can't see what they say. Next panel. We, three, we see a series of three panels of a t-shirt being folded step by step. Um, text, something to fill the time and earn some money before I move. In the three panels, the first one has the t-shirt laid flat. The second panel has it turned over and folded up a little bit. And the third panel has a finished, freshly folded t-shirt back on its back. Next panel, um, sound effect text. Bzzzt. We can see on this panel that Christine is standing at a table. She's surrounded by high, high piles of those t-shirts folded and kind of thrown together haphazardly. In the background, we can see a giant electrical fan and several boxes, papers stuck to the wall. Christine is a little bit sweaty um, and it looks like work is done for the day with the sound of the buzzer. Next panel, text. Not that I'm making much money anyways. We see there is a time clock, there's a work clock and Christine checks out, stamping in her card. The chunk is the sound effect. Next panel, uh, Christine leaves the factory, a hand over her eyes. It seems bright outside and quite hot. Um, outside of the factory, we can see some bushes and a little bit of a telephone pole behind her as she walks out. She squints into the sun. Next page. We see one long panel. There is a long panel at the top of the page and Christine is at the left. She's walking towards the bus stop all the way on the far right. Um, in between, there are more buildings in the background, more poles. There's a curb with a person sitting on the ground. At the bus stop, there are four people, the same workers from inside the factory. And there is more dialogue that we can't read that looks more like scribbles, again, from the distance. Sound effect, bzz, the sound of summer bees and summer bugs. Next panel. Scene in profile walks towards the bus stop. Sitting on a curb is an old lady who gestures at her with her hand, signifying to come over here. Um, text, Lang Loi, Lang Loi. The next panel, the old lady continues to call out to Christine. Text, Lang Loi. Christine turns around, her attention finally grabbed and looks at the old lady. Next panel, we see a close up of Christine's face as the text of dialogue says, Lang Loi. Next panel, um, we're in a flashback now. So we see two characters next to each other. Um, the one on the right is Christine, but her glasses are different, indicating this it was a few years ago. I'm not sure exactly when, but a different time when different style glasses were in fashion. She's talking to a female figure with medium tone gray hair, who's cutting some paper with scissors. The figure on the left, her mother, says, text, guess what your gong gong decided to name the finch we got him? Christine responds, what? Next panel, we see a close up of Christine's face and the text says, Lang Loi. Cute, says Christine, looking pleased about it. Next panel, we see a close up of a hand. We don't know whose hand it is, but it's a little bit wrinkled looking with one outstretched finger. There's a small bird on the finger. Text, he says that he calls to her every morning and she chirps back. Sound effect, peep. Um, we see going over into the next panel, there is a speech bubble. The left side is kind of wobbly um, before it solidifies. Text, Lang Loi. In the next panel, we see the old woman again, who's gesturing over to Christine. Next page. 
In the first panel, Christine sits down on the curb, text in quotes, beautiful, huh? We see the old woman in the foreground. Next panel, the old woman is talking to Christine now, speaking, but again, it's this weird kind of scribbly looking dialogue. We can't read what it says. Um, they're a little bit more defined than previously, but still incomprehensible. The old woman says a few lines like this to Christine with one eyebrow raised. Christine's sweaty. Next panel. Uh, we see Christine a little bit frantic, gesturing wildly with her arms. She says, text, uh, um, no, I'm sick, don't want? <laughs> she seems rather confused and panicky. Uh, next panel. We see a close up of the old woman's eyes. She doesn't seem super pleased. She silently looks back. Next panel, text, seven, eight, the old woman says. Jean is confused and doesn't really understand. Next panel, the old woman points at herself with her thumb. Seven, eight, she says again, more firmly. Next panel, we see Christine looking a little bit confused, um, holding up some fingers. She says two Chinese characters that seem to represent numbers as well. We're talking about ages, perhaps. Um, Christine holds up two fingers with one hand and all of her fingers with the other, signifying 25. Now we see the two characters in silhouette, full body silhouette, silent. They're not saying anything to each other as they sit on the curb. We see some plants around them, weeds growing from the concrete. We turn the page. We see a big panel of Christine looking out into the distance of the sky. We can see a telephone pole jutting out and a bird sitting on a wire. Text. This is embarrassing. Next panel. There's a close up of the old woman's hand as she reaches down and pulls up a weed from the ground. Again, there's one of those mysterious characters, dialogue with a question mark. Christine looks over. Next panel. We see the hand, the old woman's hand, pulling the weed up from the ground again. Um, text, pizza, sikvana. And we have a response text. Yes, sikvan, I had pizza yesterday. Next panel, the old woman throws away the weed she was pulling out. And more of that dialogue that we can't read shows up, three full bubbles of it. She's really saying something, whatever it is. Next panel, we see Christine looking kind of scared as all this dialogue that she can't understand appears behind her, cluttering around, scaring her. Next panel, it's a flashback. We see a young girl with a beautiful round face and no glasses. This is Christine as a child. She's in a room with a dresser behind her, a small statue of a smiling Buddha and some family pictures on the wall. She's missing a tooth. Very cute looking. Dialogue. That, that, thou, yeah. She seems rather pleased with herself. <laughs> Turning the page, first panel. A hand reaches from off screen. Dialogue, good girl. The hand pats <laughs> young Christine on the head, who's smiling, looking very, very pleased with herself. Um, dialogue text. She's going to start Chinese school next week. Next panel, the smiling Christine holds the hand that was patting her head. Text, I can't wait. Then we'll be able to talk all the time, Gongo. Next panel, we see a close up of the two holding hands, the larger older man hand and the young Christine's hand. Text, good girl. Next panel, we've changed scenes. Now we're at the inside of a classroom. We can see about five or six young children looking at a teacher at the front of the room. The teacher is male wearing a white collared shirt and tie and is saying a bunch of things in those mysterious characters that we've been seeing. On the board behind him is more of those characters written on the chalkboard in white. We can't make any of them out. 
all of the children seem pretty excited into it, understanding, except for Christine, who sits in the front with a slight frown on her face as she looks at the teacher in front of her. We see a small panel with Christine looking down at a piece of paper. There are question marks floating around her head. There's a close-up of the paper. We see those mysterious characters floating around. Some are on the paper, some are kind of coming off the paper, smudged. They're very mysterious. We don't really know what's going on, but it, it seems really difficult to understand. We turn the page. At the top panel, it's outside the school now. Children are going home for the day. A car has come to pick up Christine, who stands waiting at the curb. Text. So, what did you learn in class today? Next panel, we see Christine in the car putting on her seatbelt. Text. I don't know. She seems a little bit upset. Next panel. Christine, mouth shut with the seatbelt on. Text from someone else. What do you mean you don't know? You just finished class. Christine's silent, a little bit upset. Next panel. Christine rubbing her eyes, crying a little bit. Text, Chinese is too hard. Next panel, we see a close up of the crying young child Christine's face with hands rubbing. We see her mouth and the gap tooth. Text, I don't like it. I like French more. Text, I want to speak French like dad. She continues to rub her eyes. Next panel, we see on the front seats, mother and father in the foreground shaded out in gray. Mother retorts, sounding a little bit angry. Text, you, but. Christine's father interrupts. Text, well, if she doesn't like it, just let her quit. In the back seat, we can see Christine still rubbing her eyes, looking at the parents in front of her. Next panel, we see a very smug looking Christine who has somehow stopped crying immediately, somehow. <laughs> he lowers her hand. Text, good. Next page, we're in a different time now. Um, the panel borders are smoother and rounder. It's more recent, not fully in the present, but more recent, not back in childhood anymore. We see the outside of a sushi restaurant. Um, the sign says sushi, all you can eat, uh, 21.99. Inside the window, we can see two figures in silhouette at a table by the front. Um, in the background, there is a small bird on a building, text. How's dinner? A response from someone else. Text, so-so. The next panel, um, text from Christine. What did you do today? We can see Christine has those older style of glasses again. She's sitting down in a seat and is talking to the person across from her. Across from her, the person who we still can't see responds, text, nothing, sleep. Next panel, we see Christine <laughs> eating sushi. Munch, munch is the sound effect. We see a little bit of the profile of the person she's talking to in silhouette, but we can't make out any details. Next, we have a big panel. Um, in this panel, we can see the two figures at the table kind of in the background in silhouette. We don't see any details. Um, over the top of this scene, there are four boxes with text that someone is thinking. Text, what was it like fleeing China as a young man? Text, what was it like losing your wife so young and being left with four children? Text, what was it like settling in a foreign land not knowing much of the language? Text, what is it like having grandchildren that don't speak your language? We see a line of dialogue coming from Christine on the left um, where she asks, text, do you want more food? Next panel, we see the two older hands crisscrossed over a stomach, over a shirt with a pocket, text with that wobbly surrounding line. You're a good girl. We see two panels, a close up of Christine's mouth. First panel has lips kind of clenched. 
second panel, the mouth is open. Text, doje. We turn the page and we're brought back to the present, to the curb, to the old woman. So the first panel, we see Christine sitting next to the old woman. Christine looks kind of upset, a tears in her eye, and she is still kind of sweaty, having gone through all of those memories um, in quick succession. Next panel, sound effect, sniff, rub, rub. Christine is kind of upset and is rubbing her eyes now with her arm. The old woman looks over questioningly. Next panel, the old woman asks a question to Christine, uh, looking over at her from the left. We see more of those mysterious characters and in the middle, the word in English, bus. Christine responds, Text, bus? Uh, yeah, uh, four minutes. Say, the old woman replies with something. Sound effect, sniff. Christine's still upset. Next panel. We can see the two sitting on the curb next to the bus stop behind them. The people standing at the bus stop are still talking in that dialogue that we can't read, illegible. Long shadows are cast across the ground. Next panel. We see a close up of Christine's face looking kind of downcast. In the background, we can see more of that dialogue coming from off screen. Next panel a close up of a hand, the sound effect, clench. This hand's upset. And the next panel, Christine looking up at the sky again. We can see the buildings, the clouds, the telephone pole. She's silent. The text in the sky says, sorry. A bird flies off in the distance. Oops. So that was Father Father. Um, <laughs> so this is a little bit, yeah, as I said, it's a bit of a more personal story that I did. Um, it was about my time working at a clothing factory um, over the summer before I moved to Japan, actually, um, and the feelings that arose in me there. Well, Christine, I, I would love to ask you some questions. Oh, okay. Thanks, Keelan. <laughs> no problem. Um, well, my first question is not reading from, um, you know, not reading from my iPad off screen. Are you coming <laughs> up with these all on the fly? That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Improv. Um, you really uh, handled the Chinese lettering in an interesting way. To quote Victor Martins, 2021, you have really turned the racist trope of incomprehensible Asian language on its head. Can you speak to your process and decisions? Sure. Um, so in the comic, there's several times where I use these kind of scribbly looking characters to represent um, Chinese that I can't understand, um, but there is a structure to them. So I didn't just like randomly scribble around because a lot of people are like, eh, Chinese, whatever, blah, it's like incomprehensible. Um, it is really difficult to understand, but what I did when I was drawing these characters is like, I know some of the radicals for the characters and I know the basic shapes. So what I did was I like very quickly scribbled them out using like vague memories of what I know. Um, so it's not just random. They all kind of have like little bits of truth to them. Um, so if you look closely, uh, you can kind of see there are some parts that represent or resemble um, known characters and stuff. Yeah, so that's that's what I did. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Keelan. No problem. I have another question. Also, if anyone would like to ask questions for Christine, now's a good time, but you can also wait till later. Please use the Q&A box. Anyway, Christine, your comments are mainly out of bio. Um, so with the funny ones, and then also like your um, ALT comics, that we did at the beginning. Um, and also with Father Father, how do you decide um, what to show and what not to show and how much uh, vulnerability do you think is too much? Um, well, usually I'm the kind of person that deflects all questioning and emotions with humor, you know, like say something to me and I'll make a joke out of it, like, haha, doesn't matter. Um, so usually I do like lighthearted, funny stuff like the auto bio things, things that I think other people would enjoy and find humorous. Um, Father Father was actually really different from it because it is like something that's really much more personal to me. Um, and I was a little bit nervous about making it, but I wanted to be able to, I wanted to be able to share 
like this experience um, with people, like I wanted people to kind of understand how I was feeling, what I was going through. And this is like not an isolated incident, right? Like going through these memories and feeling guilty and stuff like that. Um, in this case, it is edited. So like, it isn't like 100% of the truth of everything. So it is edited to make it more palatable for the comic format and for other people and um, sharing only what I'm comfortable with sharing in it. It is a difficult balance because once it's out there, people have read it and they can interpret it however they want. Um, so, which is why usually I try to avoid that by only doing lighthearted, funny stuff. Um, so, Father, Father, uh, don't talk to me about it too much or I will cry. This is a threat. Um, but yes, I, does that answer your question? Not at all. The answer is don't talk to me about it. I'll cry. Well, we actually have an uh, audience question. Are you interested in this? Do you want me to I'm read it for you? Right. I'll get a, yeah, it's fine. Hold on, let me scan this first before uh, to make sure it's not horrible. Okay. Okay, I, well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll read it. Anonymous asked, I really like your connection to heritage, family, and language. Do you feel family bonds can be strong even without being able to speak the same verbal language? Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. Like, I think language, verbal language is just one way that people communicate with each other, right? There are so many other ways that you can express your feelings or care for another person, um, like acts of service or like quality time. These are the love languages. Uh, so words of affirmation are only one of them, right? Um, so yeah, and like just being family doesn't automatically make a strong connection, right? It's about what you choose to do with your family, how you treat your family. Um, in this case with my grandfather, of course there was a big language barrier. So I wouldn't, I wasn't able to 100% communicate with him all the time, but I definitely like, we loved each other, right? We spent so much time together and I could tell by the way he took care of me and yeah, I think it goes way, way beyond verbal things for love. Way, way beyond. Yeah. Would you like another question? Just sure. For me? Sure. Um, okay. Um, have you ever shown this comic to your family? Um, if so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh gosh, did um, did things change? Um, if not, how would they, the input from them change the story? Or what would Father, Father 2 look like? Um, so Fathering. it's actually, it's actually really funny. Like I haven't like actually shown this comic to anyone in my immediate family, like anyone that actually knows my gong gong. Um, but, but two parts. The first part is my mother saw this cover. Like she saw the cover. She didn't like attempt to read it, but she saw this and she picked it up and she was like, why does it say father, father? And I was like, you know, it's like gong gong. And she was like, that's not what that means. And I was like, oh shit. So even like the title is kind of like an in-joke where it's like, as a kid, I thought that Gong Gong meant like father, father, but that doesn't make sense because one, he was my mother's father. Um, and two, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. So the cover itself is kind of a joke about how little Chinese I know um, and like, but it's fun. Um, I didn't want to name it mother, father though, because I feel like father, father makes it really clear that it's like a grandfather type of thing. Whereas mother, father might be a more parental thing. Yeah. Um, and, and as for actually showing the contents to family, no, I have not, but I have strong reason to suspect that one or more of my family members may be watching this right now. Um, oh. So as to how they will react to it, I will find that out shortly, I believe. Hey, Stephanie. Anyways, any more <laughs> questions? Um, yeah, Jordan, how much time do we have? I was gonna say, um, maybe ask one, answer one more question and then we'll move on to the next uh, panelist or uh, creator so we can keep the night moving and uh, yes. answer more questions at the end because right. time, time's just moving along nicely but as much <laughs> as I'm enjoying this, it's really great dialogue. Okay, um, I will ask this question from Vincy, well, yes. Um, Vincy says, I love this. It made me very emotional. What appeals to you about autobio? What appeals to you about autobio? I shouldn't have read it like that. 
What appeals to you about Autobio? Um, as well, how do you find the experience of depicting yourself in such an emotional way? Um, so I love Autobio because I love telling stories and being able to share my own personal experiences, um, whether it's funny and like silly experiences or more personal things that maybe other people can relate to as well. So I really like Autobio, being able to share parts of myself and have people understand um, a little bit of the experience of what it's like to be another person, whether it's a high school English teacher or Asian Canadian. Um, so I really like being able to share that. Um, what was the second part of the question again? Sorry. The second part of the question has disappeared. Let me find it. Um, it says, how, how do you find the experience of depicting yourself in such an emotional way? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I think the style that I draw is a little bit more cartoony. So even if it's like really emotional, um, I don't know, I, I, it kind of balances itself out, I think, where we can kind of look at it, at it from a more cartoony way. Um, I mean, the way that I draw myself, like I draw myself with like a really round face and like big glasses, because that's how I see myself. Um, but I've had some people have told me like, oh, you don't really look like that. So one very nice lady was like, but you're so much more beautiful than your drawings. And that was very, very nice lie of her. Um, I think, I don't know, it, it's nice having people be able to see and read and understand and like feel similarly to me and be able to relate to me even with really different experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's uh, it. Thank you very much. Wait, I also guess. Zika wants oh. to know as the sushi place is based on the one that used to be downtown right near Young and Dundas, LOL. <laughs> no, the sushi place was in Scarborough where mm. I grew up. Yeah, there are a lot of all you can eat sushi places. Um, Sorry, back when ZK. Yeah. All right. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for answering all my questions, Christine. No problem. Thanks for being a great questioner. Yeah. So now um, we're going to pass it off to the next boyfriend, Jade Armstrong. Hello. Um, small outfit change on my end. Um, I'm now wearing a green jumpsuit with short sleeves. Um, as the maid bit has ended, um, we are done with this joke. Um, anyway, thank you for coming. Share my screen. Oh my god. Share. Present. Okay. Um. Jada Armstrong, which is B, and then um. <laughs> I'll come back to this. I'm gonna get. We can come back to this. We can come back to that. Um, I'm just gonna dive right in. This is my zine. Um, the title reads, I do not want mobs um, by Jade Armstrong. Um, so there's a black and white ink wash drawing of a gray cat in a sweater vest being swarmed by red mobs. Um, the cat is dropping a half eaten taiyaki in the air. Um, just a style note moving forward. Um, the whole comic is in this style of a ink wash grayscale, um, except for all of the moths, which are just in uh, a red color. Even um, their line work is uh, a saturated red. Cool. So let's begin. This, the <laughs> this is the interior cover of my scene, which is... Um, <clears throat> beautiful uh, drawings of beautiful red moths of uh, varying sizes and species. The uh, beautiful ink wash drawing of a half eaten taiyaki on the ground. Potentially the one that the cat dropped. Who's to say? Page one. Um, we have four panels of equal size. First panel is moths fluttering around in the sky with a generic city skyline in the background. Um, text reads, moths are everywhere. Second panel has our cat holding an ice cream cone in front of a store window that is advertising some pills. There are moths fluttering around and the text reads, they flutter on the street. 
The third panel has our cat eating some snacks out of a bowl. They're curled up on their bed in front of their laptop. Um, and moths are like flying out of their screen. And the text reads, they come out of my TV. Um, the fourth panel has our cat reading a magazine in a library. The magazine has, uh, the cover of the magazine has like a fish skeleton on it um, with the title, a healthy question mark. <laughs> um, and a bunch of moths are like coming out of the pages um, of the, um, of the magazine um, and the text reads and they fly from my books. Page two. Um, first panel is of our cat holding uh, like a bento of some kind. Um, and they're looking at their coworkers eating lunch together at a table in the foreground. Um, moths are floating around, uh, floating around like the coworkers in, in particular. Um, and the text reads, uh, they hang out at my work. And then the second panel, um, the text continues to say, and around my family. And in the second panel we have, um, our cat is holding like a carton of milk, like some kind of carton of something, maybe milk. Um, Cause cats definitely drink milk and cream and that's definitely very good for them. Um, and they're looking at their family all gathered around the kitchen um, and the family is surrounded by moths. Um, our third panel has our cat hanging out at a picnic with all their friends. Um, all of them are happily eating together. Um, there are a few moths hanging around. Um, and the text reads, even my friends have moths. The fourth panel has our cat eating a donut, walking down the street. Um, and they're looking at a, like a big Luna moth. Um, and the text reads, it's super normal to have them. Page three. Our cat is aggravated. They're shaking their head around um, and the text reads, but I don't want moths. Um, and then we have, okay, so we have four little panels and the text reads, um, they spoil my food and bite my hands. They whisper in my ears and eat my clothes. Um, and so the first panel has our cat yelling at all of these moths in their food dish because um, apparently he goes from, from food dishes uh, bentos to food dishes, which is fine. Um, hey, they cry. Uh, the next panel is a close up on the cat's paw, which is covered in bandages. Uh, sound effects is uh, chomp. The moth is biting the cat's thumb. Uh, cat says, ouch. The third panel is our cat trying to like write or something. Um, and they're just like surrounded by all these moths um, and they're like whispering in the cat's ear. There's like little tiny um, little tiny like speech bubbles um, with nothing in them. <laughs> and the cat says, OMG, hush. <laughs> and the fourth panel um, has like a collared shirt um, with some bite marks in it. Um, I guess bite marks is taken out of it. Maybe. Anyway, the cat says, <laughs> the cat says gasp. Um, and they also have like a patch um, on their clothes. Um, Page four. So first panel, we have our cat ripping open their cupboard door. Wham! Um, in their cupboard is like rows and rows of what looks like cleaning supplies. Um, but the other products say things such as uh, moth be gone, fly by moths, uh, anti-moth, no moth zone. Um, <laughs> And some of them just have like the, the kind of like the cancel symbol, which is like the circle with like the line through it. And then a very shorthand moth on it. Um, second panel is a dramatic upshot of our cat. And they're grabbing like, a, like an aerosol can um, with the cancel sign on it. Um, the cat looks determined and the text reads, I don't want moths. I can't let them bite me. Page five, panel one. Our cat is furiously spraying the moth be gone. <laughs> Text reads, I am particularly sensitive to moths. Second panel is a close up of our cat with uh, bandages on their paw, hands um, and face. Um, 
Moths are like chilling around. Um, text reads, their bites flare up and take forever to heal. Um, panel three, text, they block my eyes and ears and I can't hear anything else. Um, this is a mid shot of our cat um, surrounded by whispering moths. The cat is like pissed. Uh, they're saying, ugh, go away. Panel four goes on to have our cat swarmed by like a million moths. Uh, the cat cries out, ah, and the text reads, my whole world becomes moths. Page six, panel one, text. The worst is when people try to push their moths on me. In this panel, we have our cat is at um, some kind of party. They're holding a hot dog, an octopus hot dog in one hand. Uh, they're chatting with a bunny um, who is holding some kind of drink. And the bunny also has like a cute little moth um, kind of like perched under their, their fingers. Um, crowds around some framed art in the background. Uh, panel two, the bunny releases the moth like into the air and the bunny says, this moth will do you wonders. Our cat responds, oh, um, no thanks, and, and waves the moth away. Panel three, our cat, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, our cat starts to flee. <laughs> they, start, they start to flee um, with the moth in hot pursuit um, and the, 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 the moth has like started to like whisper all the, the silly little nothings. Um, they're coming at, they're coming after this cat. And the bunny calls out, just one little bite. It's so good for you. Uh, and our cat responds, no way. Panel four. The cat is booked, they are booking it. They're, they have gulped down the octo dog. It is in the cat's mouth. The moth is in the foreground. Um, it's a, it's like a moth with eyes on its wings. Um, party goers in the background stare as our cat yells, ah, get away from me. Page seven, panel one. Cat blasts out of the door of the event onto the street, moth right behind them. Blam! Um, panel two, <laughs> moth, the moth is coming in in the foreground. They're, they're about to catch him. And our cat takes out their handy dandy moth be gone can and furiously starts spraying themselves, uh, kind of like you would mosquito repellent. Um, there's all these sound effects like this. Um, and the cat is yelling, not again. Um, panel three. Uh, <laughs> the cat holds up the can like super triumphantly. Ha ha, um, they exclaim, you'll never defeat me. Uh, the moth is like, is like fluttering away. Uh, sound effects say flop flop. Um, we see some abstract art paintings in the window in the background. Um, panel four, the, <laughs> the cat's victory dance is interrupted and they look up at something off screen. Dun, dun, dun. Page eight, one big panel. Um, in the foreground, uh, our cat looks up into the sky to see a giant emperor moth. Um, it has huge eyes on its wings. And it is very, 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 very beautiful. Um, it is surrounded up by like tons of like these other smaller moths. Um, tall buildings, uh, the city loom in the background. Um, I always imagine being like, like, oh, sort of thing. Um, very tantalizing. Page nine, down shot on the street. Our cat is a. Uh, is looking up at the sky, um, eyes like wide. <laughs> um, they've dropped their, their can on the ground um, and there's like moths like flapping around everywhere. Um, sound effects reads, uh, flap, 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 flap. Um, text reads, that moth is so beautiful. Just one bite, I won't swell this time. I'll do it right. It's so normal to have moths. Um, in the top right corner, we see someone walking down the street. 
page 10, panel one, um, our cat is like about to like go for it. Um, when suddenly off screen, someone says, hey, I think you dropped something. Um, she like interrupts the cat. Um, panel two, down shot on the ground. A mysterious white paw is picking up the can and uh, they say, oh, wow. Uh, and they have a little, little lion's tail. Panel three, character reveal. Uh, our cat turns around to see a, a very cute lion um, holding a hamburger and uh, the spray can that our, our cat dropped. Uh, They're wearing a long sleeve boiler suit. Ghostbusters style. <laughs> Just like me right now uh, with a... <laughs> God. Um, with a Ghostbuster style, like anti-mob logo, like <laughs> on the chest. Um, this is peak humor. So the lion looks at the can and says, I love this stuff. Um, page 11, the, our cat and the moth. Oh my god, the moth. There's lots of moths. So there's moths floating around. Um, but the cat and the lion, there's too many animals. <laughs> so all these animals in my comics. So the cat and the lion are, are standing on the street. Um, uh, our cat has the can, the aerosol can of mothy gum back, back in their little paws. Um, the lion is looking cool with their hamburger. Um, and the cat says, thank you. I use it all the time. And the lion responds with, right, it's so tough. Moths are everywhere. And the big, scary, beautiful emperor moth is fluttering away in the distance. Um, we see some, some tall buildings in the background. Finn, this is the interior cover of my zine. There are some beautiful, Beautiful drawings of some red moths of varying species and a and a business card that says moth be gone professional extermination <laughs> with the very real phone number uh 666 And I believe that is the end of my comic. Um this is me. So, so this is, uh, to describe what is on the screen, we have um, lots of drawings of me done with a trackpad, um, drawn by various members of the Hello Boyfriend. And there are also the words, Sonic the Hedgehog, Parappa the Rapper crossed out. And there is also a beautiful image, a beautiful drawing of me by the lovely one and only Keelan. And there's a little bonus Christine that I almost didn't crop out of the picture in the top corner, top right corner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Hey there, it's hey, Christine. Hey guys. Hey, hey guys. Um, um, Jade, if it's okay, can I, can I ask you some questions? Please, Christine, go right ahead. Cool. All right. So my first question for you. So I don't want moths. Um, moths. There are a lot of moths. I get the feeling that it goes a little bit deeper than that. I don't think <laughs> you're like a moth hater specifically, right? Um, so what, what are the moths? How, what are the moths, please? Of course. The metaphor runs deep and is very, um, very obvious in this book. It's not actually about moths, everyone. <laughs> New splash. Um, so, so I like, I like dreamt up the scene. Um, I, so this, so I drew this in summer 2019. Um, it, it came into life when I was like reflecting on my own struggles with uh, alcohol and food addiction. Um, and as like an addict a few years into recovery, the challenges that I face are like a bit different now. And I wanted to explore a bit the daily work that it takes to stay uh, sober in like a world that like desperately does not want you to stay sober at all. Um, 
and sometimes even to this day I can feel pretty like I feel pretty bitter about it like oh man I'm like other people can have all these healthy relationships with food and drink but I can't woe is me um so it was kind of cathartic for me to write a story that is not better that is hopeful and sympathetic and very very silly um you know like as much as I wish I could live in a world without moths I can't and lamenting about it isn't gonna do any anyone any good and I think the moths specifically when I was uh writing and drawing this this comic I don't know they can kind of be whatever you want but I was they, they began anyway to represent intrusive thoughts. Um, yeah. And one of the joys of having this comic out is uh, not telling people what the moths represent. And then they get to tell me what they think the moths represent. And it's always so fun. People interpret the work very, very differently. And it's very, just a, such a joy to, to get to see that as a creator. Yeah, I think it's great that you've made something that many people can read and while relating to your own struggles, like take it and make it their own in a way too. I think that's really great. Um, and let's see. Okay, so I have another question for you. So in your zine, it's mostly like grayscale and the only color that we actually see are the moths that are like this kind of bright reddish orangey color. Um, so is there a reason why you specifically chose that color to represent the moths rather than like, I don't know, like blue or green or bug colors or something? <laughs> bug colors. Um, very good. Blue, green or bug colors. Um, this is true. It's canon. <laughs> Look it up. Um, so I may, so this zine, when I was creating it, I created it specifically with a risograph two-tone printing in mind. So this is uh, on the screen. I'm holding up a printed copy of my zine. It is, I should know the dimensions of this, but I don't. Um, I don't know, like five by four inches, maybe? That's probably- Pardon wrong. the interruption, Jade, but you're still sharing your screen and I would love to see your, your printed zine. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry, prop the rapid Jade Armstrong. How's this? Um, looks great, thank you. If the sun is set, the lighting in my room is very right different now. <laughs> um, so before I even began, I was like, okay, so I want it to be two tones, um, which means two colors. The two colors in the scene are black and red. And I have in the past gotten a zine printed at the wonderful Pin Dot Press. Um, and the, uh, the risographer there, um, Olivia. So I had this like, I, <laughs> I made this fan comic. So I made this fan, I made a bubbly fan comic, which obviously had to be like, like black and red, um, obviously because one of, the, anyway, it doesn't matter. And uh, Olivia was like, you should totally get this printed on like, a, like a cream paper um, because the cream paper and then like a transparent red makes the book like a, like it makes just the red so beautiful. It's like almost like a pinky red. And I loved it so much in my silly fanzine that I was like, I have to do it again. The colors aren't doing this justice, but the paper is like an off-white cream. Um, and I don't think I have 100% possibly on the red except for the lines. Um, anyway, I just like really liked how it looked. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose red. Having two explicitly different colors was important to me to drive home the metaphor that moths are not real. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we have an audience question. So when you were reading, you were like, oh, like here's a lion wearing a jumpsuit. So we have a question, which is, is that why you changed your outfit? <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> I will say here at Hello Boyfriend, we 
we do have a what is the what is the saying a flair for the dramatic that's true yeah it's true it's true mm -hmm. and i will say i love the outfit change thank you thank you christine me also thank you Keelan. me too i love this oh my god thanks <laughs> thank you i love this jumpsuit i love jumpsuits um a good boiler suit okay um and okay so those are all the questions for now um so let's move on and then if we have more questions at the end then we'll we'll answer them there that's right, great thanks, thank you so much Ciao.